Thanks. That's awesome. I, I, I hadn't read that bio in forever. Um, <laughs> I am here to talk about repurposing the human spirit. You know, Kyle Mafo is just talking about that very idea and what we want in our city and how we get there. Um, so just for the record, uh, my name is Roy Moffis, and I own a company called Gorilla Design. Uh, we sort of specialize in uh, repurposing shipping containers, um, finding different types of technologies, like rammed earth blocks and that sort of thing. This is an example of one of our disaster relief units. Uh, I call it field testing. It was at Burning Man. Um, and, you know, when I first got this, uh, when, I, when I first was told that, you know, I got the call that I'd be speaking at TEDx, and I, I, it was by my friend Nick Ferrari, and I was like, Nick, it's Roy. I thought he maybe was talking to somebody else. But, and I found out that my verb was, uh, or my word was repurpose. And so I thought I'd look it up. <laughs> um, so, to reuse for a different purpose on a long-term basis without alteration, to alter, to make suited for a different purpose. Okay, I thought I could definitely do this. I do, you know, recycled shipping containers. This shouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, but then I started to really think about sustainability. Like, what is it in particular? Like, what is sustainability? Is sustainability solar panels? Is it... Is it lead certifications? Is it managed forest? Is it recycling? It's, it's all of those things, I guess, right? Whoops, there we go. But I kept looking around, and I kept looking around, and I started to see sustainability different. And, and it's really much more complex. Like when we say that one material or another is sustainable, like, Styrofoam is really, really bad in a landfill, right? It lasts like thousands of years. But it's really kind of good as a building material because you'd like it to last a thousand years. And, and you're just sort of thinking about like, okay, are we throwing this away over here when we can be using it here? Um, and I, I, just was, I just kept thinking about that and kept thinking about that. I have the honor to work with great, great people. Ever since I arrived here after Hurricane Katrina, I have been so blessed. One of the guys I work with uh, is a fellow named John Dow. He is the star of this movie. And John is a survivor of a horrible genocide in Sudan. And John, he's new to Western civilization, so I can always count on just a completely different perspective from John. And I started thinking about, like, what about all these other ideas that, that are in sustainability, like um, taking water bottles and turning them into fleece jackets? And, and I was like, John, what do you think about that? And John was like, you know, that's kind of cool, but I know lots of people who really need the water bottles. And I was like, need the water bottles? John, we could use the process of pyrolysis, right? And we could do this, and we could make electricity, and then we could make building materials, and then we can actually make liquid fuels out of the waste, and wouldn't that be awesome? And John says to me, you know, Roy, you can live your whole life without a gallon of fuel, or a fleece for that matter, but you are not going to make it four days without a drink of water. And I thought, good point, good point. And I started looking, I started thinking about sustainability and technology and this perception that we are going to invent something that is somehow going to bridge the gap between where we are here and you know, the sustainable Salt Lake City we want to be on the horizon, right? 
I'm not so sure. Because we seem to have a problem. We seem to invent solutions that actually create more problems later. Like, it's really, really great that our doctors are able to have clean noodles every, <laughs> noodles, clean needles every time you show up at the doctor, and they're like vacuum packed and completely sterile and lightweight, and they can be shipped all around the world, and you can give somebody in the middle of nowhere in the jungle a sterile shot. I mean, this is an amazing thing. Yay us, right? Washes up on our beach. <laughs> Uh, needs to be incinerated in the middle of a Salt Lake neighborhood. Not so good. Boo us. And I started to think about transportation. You know, we, we live in the city and, and we're able now on planet Earth to transport goods and people and services faster than we ever have before as a species, like around our whole globe. That's a great thing. Poisoning ourselves is not such a great thing. Again, boo us. I started to think about the things that we take for granted. Voila! Um, and I started to think about sewage and clean water, again, from John's statement. And, you know, we use gallons of water to flush ounces of waste and to us, they like magically disappear into the ether, but that's not true. It takes billions of dollars of infrastructure, again, see Kyle, uh, and billions of dollars to maintain that infrastructure. If we were to like look at the developing world and say, okay, this is what you guys need to do because that's what we did, we'd be woefully behind and we cannot do that. So we have to find other technologies. And I started to think, about technology and its relationship with us. It's like forgotten technologies. Like, technology's our friend, but take this for instance. This is the Taos Pueblo, okay? This is the oldest continually, and continually inhabited structure in North America. It was built using mud and straw and sticks. No architecture degrees, no solar panels. I went there and it was one of those, it was in the dead of winter. I mean, it's like snowing sideways. And I'm like, and it's also in the desert, so it's like being sandblasted and flash frozen all at the same time. And I like get inside and I'm like, wow, this is really nice. It's really nice in here. Mud walls, but they're two feet thick. That's a lot of heat mass. And the fireplace was actually not on the external wall where we like to put them, um, but actually on an internal wall. And it was like actually heating the whole space around it and the other rooms. And there was a little tiny fire in it. It wasn't burning like log after log after log. There was a little tiny fire in it. I thought, wow, that's worth noting. This is another old technology, ammonia, the ammonia cooling process. Now, ammonia is the greenest. Uh, refrigerant there is. It has uh, an ozone depletion uh, re uh, value of zero and a, green, uh, a gr global warming uh, rating of zero as well. And no other refrigerant can boast this. Ammonia was actually the refrigerant of choice before Freon. It was actually invented or, not, or discovered, that's the way you want to see it, uh, by Carl von Lind in 1876. 1876. This is like some new revolutionary green technology. No, you know? It is also the refrigerant and coolant of choice of NASA and has been for the past like four decades. <laughs> Who knew, right? 
You know what this is? This is thorium. Thorium is found in about 78% of the Earth's crust, just general mud all around the planet, okay? Thorium holds the promise for clean, I'm gonna say this word, nuclear energy, right? You know why? Because thorium actually burns 95% of its fuel, as opposed to the reactors that we now have, that only use 5% of their fuel. Here's the thing. Thorium, in a thorium reactor, uh, you do get weapons-grade weapons grade, uh, uranium-233, but it's only available between 400 degrees Celsius and 500 degrees Celsius, which means if you want to steal it to go make a bomb, you need to come up with a briefcase that can keep it at that temperature. And that ain't going to work so well, right? So it's not so easy to steal. And the whole reactor will shut down at the same time. This is not new. This is not new. We've known about thorium since 1828. In fact, the United States government uh, actually ran a thorium reactor from 1965 to 1969 for 15,000 hours without incident. The project uh, was later discarded in 1973 because none of its byproducts could be used to make weapons. I started to think about technology, and I started to think about sustainability again. And I thought, what in the world has been holding us up? I brought this. You know what this is? Can, right? Technologically speaking, we have been able to end world hunger since we invented this. So possibly the technology is not the solution. And I have no idea what a world would look like, like how our economies would survive. I have no idea what that would look like. If everyone had clean water and food and power, how would this work? Don't look at me because I seriously, I have no idea. I, as long as I've been alive on the planet Earth, uh, mankind has suffered from war and famine and poverty. But you know what? I have the feeling like have the feeling like not knowing is okay. It's totally okay. You know why? Because we are curious creatures. We can't help it. We have opposable thumbs and arms and legs and to run ourselves all the way to the horizon. And when we get there, you know what else is going to happen? We're going to stop, we're going to look around, and we're going to go, wow, where's the next horizon? That's just who we are. So as opposed to being depressed about it, I'm actually rather hopeful about it. Um, I don't know what that world looks like, but I can tell you what we're doing at Guerrilla Design. What we do is we try to focus on net zero buildings. Um, and we try to do that by looking at the waste stream of whatever locale that we are in. So we are constantly working with our global partners and developing nations to find out what they have on the ground. You know what, better yet, what's in your garbage can that I can use, right? Um, this is our disaster relief unit. Uh, it's packed with technology, you know, a kilowatt of solar on top, refrigeration, uh, microwave convection oven so you can bake, broil, and microwave all in the same unit, an induction cooktop, water filtration down to 0.2 microns, okay? After it goes through that process, it's then treated with ultraviolet light so it can kill off uh, any other bacteria. It's got batteries and a flexible solar panel, and all of this fits into a repurposed ammunition can 
that uh, we got from right down the road. And it's, as it turns out, they're everywhere, sadly. Um, but yeah, so we do that. We do schools. We do homes. Um, I have been so blessed to be working with some of the best people. I, I, th I think they're the best people in the world. I, it makes me, I'm unafraid to go into any room because I've got these guys with me. Well, I think that the next great renewable energy source is us. So we're like the curse and the solution here. All right? I think that the next big thing in renewable energy is human beings. You know, take for instance Julia Ward Howe. Julia Ward Howe, she writes The Battle Hymn of the Republic, right? A good, nice, stiff marching tune for boys to go off and die to. Um, inspire soldiers. Just a few years after that, after witnessing the tragedy of the Civil War and losing fathers and sons, husbands, she recognizes that she has more in common with her, her previous enemy than she has differences. And she creates Mother's Day for Peace. That's where Mother's Day really comes from. Mother's Day was created as peace activism. We've forgotten that Hallmark moment, but that's what it was originally created for. Let's start. This is one of the people that John Dow has worked with in South Sudan. Not only did he come here, but he went back. And he, this guy is a leper who was blind, who can now see. And he hardly notices his leprosy anymore. He's really happy. <laughs> so we can come back to this. And we can start to realize that all of these ideas um, for repurposing things and repurposing the human spirit, if we can really tap into that, we can start to do things like make building materials that actually capture carbon from the air. We can do things like use composting toilets to simultaneously uh, provide better food and nutri nutrients to the ground, uh, food for human beings, and at the same time, um, combat, uh, what do you call that? Runoff. <laughs> um, I started to think that in actuality, I get that it's really hard sometimes to look around the world and see that it's a good place to be. It's tough when you look at the news and things like that. But you know what? What if we could see something else? If we could see, I see, I see a new opportunity in every pile of trash. I see a world where we are no longer having a big conversation about the demise of the human race. On the contrary, I say this is not our final hour, but this is an opportunity for our finest hour. Thank you very much. Welcome to Salt Lake City 2.0. Yeah. <laughs>